so today's video, we're obviously going to be continuing the YouTube 101 series, and today's video, we are finally going to start getting into some equipment. So today, I'm going to be talking about a few of the cameras that I use and what I recommend, and then I'm going to kind of go into the pros and cons of them as well, and what they're best used for. So first off, before we get into this video, if you guys want to stick around and see more of the YouTube 101 series, make sure to subscribe right here. That way you get notified for every single time that I post. Also, you guys, I have a vlog channel if you do not know that already, and I have been vlogging quite frequently so make sure to subscribe to that I will have it linked down below for you guys so definitely go check that out and now let's just go ahead and get into our YouTube 101 on camera all right so for the very first camera that I'm gonna talk about is the camera that I started YouTube on and what a lot of people actually start YouTube on well a lot of people start YouTube on their phone or their laptops back in the day a lot of people used to shoot their videos on laptops which was crazy and it's insane how long they lasted using laptops and then as time went on everyone started upgrading and then now it's like all about the DSLRs but that is a great way to start on YouTube is to start either with your phone or your laptop. For me personally, I started with my phone. I started with an iPhone 6 Plus, you guys, and honestly, phones these days have some of the best cameras on them. They have like better cameras than a lot of like the point and shoots that are out there, which is crazy. So when I first started, I actually used my iPhone 6 Plus and then I edited with the iMovie app that was on the iPhone. It comes free with it, so it made it really easy for me to do because I did not own a MacBook. I always been a Dell person. And I have to say when I made that switch over to MacBook, oh, I love it so much better. I love Mac way better than HP, so I definitely recommend Macs, especially if you're doing YouTube. It makes everything so much easier because your phone, everything connects to it. But getting back into the phone cameras, if you guys are filming videos with your phone, this is the cheapest option to do. And what I recommend, what I did is I actually filmed with a front facing camera because I didn't know any better at that time. But you actually want to film with the back facing camera because this is actually a better camera than the front camera is. It's a lot better quality back here. So if you can like set up a mirror and kind of look at it to make sure you're in focus, then film that way. The back camera creates really great quality for video, so I definitely recommend it. And when I used my camera, you guys, I literally made like a stack of books and just put that in front of me. So I made like my own little makeshift tripod for it. And then also I made sure to film in a very well lit area. So make sure to find the biggest window with the most light coming in in your house and film right in front of that. I had three windows around me. So I had one in front of me and then I had two on the side, which really lit up the area. And I filmed in my kitchen, you guys. And a lot of people couldn't believe that it was actually on my iPhone because if you're filming in really good lighting, it will definitely up the quality of your camera. So I definitely recommend starting off with your phone or starting off with your laptop because you want to make sure that this is something that you want to do and stick with before you invest in it. All right, so before I get into my filming camera, I wanna talk about some point and shoots that I have that I also recommend and that I use for vlogging. I actually use one of these for my product shots. I don't even use my DSLR for my product shots because sometimes I'm a little too lazy to take that thing off the tripod and then take the product shots. So let's just go ahead and get into my first recommendation. And I've got Elsa that's super, super needy right now. All right, so one of my cameras that I use for vlogging, for product shots, and you can also use this for filming, it is the Sony A5100. A lot of people use this camera, guys. You know Desi and Lester Lux. Um, even Jaclyn Hill uses this one. A lot of them use them for their makeup photos that they take because it's a great camera. It is a mirrorless camera, which means that it does not have a fixed lens on it. You can actually change the lens on it, which is awesome. Here, let me take it off. So as you guys can see, I can take that lens off of it, which is great and is definitely really handy because if you want to grab a different lens to get a different effect or a different shot, you can easily do that. I really love this camera. It's got soft skin focus. If you have any blemishes or texture on your skin, it really helps smooth those out. It just creates a really flattering picture of the skin. And then also another really big plus to this is that it has a Wi-Fi to it. So basically when you just turn it on, you just turn on and then you go to menu and then you go to wireless and you can click send to smartphone. And then what you'll do is on your smartphone is you will find the network that this is hooked up to because it has its own wireless network to it, kind of. And you just connect to that network. 
And then you will also have to download the app Play Memories onto your phone. It's free, but basically you just click on that after you hook up to the network and then it will send your photos over. So you can have it to where you select the photos on the camera and then have them transferred over immediately, or you can actually select the photos on your phone so that way you're not loading up your phone with a bunch of pictures. So I absolutely love this, you guys. I rarely ever use my mermaid card into my laptop and then send it to my phone. I will just go directly to this, which is awesome for when I'm on the go and I'm like traveling or something. I'm taking a picture of like Joel and I and Elsa, if you guys see in the car, I'll just automatically hook up to that network and then send the photos over. So that is another plus to it. And then also what I love about this is that it has a flip screen to it. So it's great for vlogging and seeing yourself in the frame, which is awesome. Also, a lot of people actually use this camera to film on. It is a great camera to film on, you guys. This camera is only about $599. It's basically about $600 for this camera. So I think this is a great starting camera if you just are starting to think about getting into YouTube, if you want to film some quick videos with it. And then also you can take a lot of product shots and you can take a lot of makeup pictures. So it's, so it's very versatile and I definitely recommend it. And it also shoots in HD. So it's amazing quality, you guys. Just get some really good lighting in there, get some really good daylight, and you will really up the quality of this camera. And I actually use this to do my vlogging on. I have two cameras I use for vlogging. I actually like this one the best, but the only down part is that this camera is super, super bulky because of this lens. This lens is huge. That's like one of the down points to this. And then also another down point to this camera is that it does overheat quite frequently. So it makes it really hard to film long videos on it because your camera will overheat and then you'll have to stop, let it rest a little bit, let it cool off, and then have to start up again. So that's the one down point to this camera is I know that's like one of the flaws in it when I've been like researching all the reviews on it is that it overheats really easily. So you can't really take that long of videos with it, but I think it's a great versatile camera and I think it's a great camera to start off with. I take all those product photos that I show on my Instagram, Madison 89 Miller, I take them all with this camera. And what's awesome about it is I'll basically turn it on. I will make sure I'm on this superior auto, which is basically the intelligence auto one. Click on that. And then what you can do is you go down and you can change the brightness on it. You can change the color of it if you want it to be more warm or cooler. I always go more towards the cooler side to kind of bring a really pretty blue hue to the picture. I really like it. And then also you could do vividness, which is really gonna make those colors pop, which is great for those makeup pictures. It will just really make all those colors in your eyeshadows or your lipstick just really pop, but you never wanna go too crazy with it because sometimes it can make you look a little red, which is why I always make sure to go on the color portion and turn down the hue to the cooler side to kind of make me not look so red. <laughs> so I definitely recommend the Sony A5100 if you are just starting in YouTube and you don't wanna film on a camera and you don't want to film on a laptop I think this is a great starter camera just be wary that it does overheat quite easily but I know a lot of people that actually film on this camera and I was blown away when I found out I was like oh my god it does not seem that a little point and shoot camera can do that but it's a great quality camera and this actually goes right up to par between a DSLR and this camera. They are just absolutely amazing quality. The only problem is that this has a shorter battery life and that it overheats. All right, so the next camera I'm gonna be talking about is another camera that I use for vlogging. This one is a little bit more travel friendly, but I actually definitely prefer this one because I don't know, the picture just looks so much better quality on this camera than it does on the camera I'm about to talk about. So the other camera that I have is the Sony RX100. Three. There's a lot of vloggers out there that use this camera, which is why I purchased it. And this one is actually pretty pricey. You can purchase this one at B&H Photo for $798 or Best Buy. It's basically $800 for this camera, which is crazy. This is definitely more expensive than the Sony A5100, and I feel like this one is definitely more versatile than this one. But what I love about this one is that it's definitely more travel friendly. It doesn't have a really bulky lens on it. It is a fixed lens on here, so you cannot remove the lens. It's not mirrorless. It does have really good quality to it, and you can also do a little bit of a skin softener to it as well. It also has really fast autofocusing to it as well. A very comparable camera to this one is the Canon G7X, I want to say say and that's one that a lot of vloggers use. Another person that uses this camera is Marissa Lace. If you guys know her, she does a lot of vlogging. She had the 3 and I think she upgraded to the 4 when her 3 broke. 
But yeah, she uses this camera. That's how I kind of found out about this camera. There's actually quite a bit of vloggers that use this one, but there's like even more vloggers that actually use the Canon G7X. And that one is actually cheaper than this one. That one is about $689 and this one is about $798. So basically $800, $700. So it's $100 cheaper. But I hear not the greatest things about the G7X because I hear that the autofocus is really bad on it. It's pretty slow. I mean, if you want a really good lightweight vlogging camera that focuses really quickly and has good quality and everything, then I definitely recommend this one. This one also has the Wi-Fi capabilities that the Sony a 100 has too. So you can definitely easily take a photo or something and then send it right to your phone through the network. Super easy. I really, really love that feature on these cameras. It just makes it so much easier if you don't have your laptop with you. So another plus about this camera is that it also has that flip up screen, which makes it really easy to view yourself, make sure that you're recording, make sure that you're in focus and in the frame, which is great. So I have to say that this one is good for if you are really into vlogging. It's very travel friendly, easy to fit in the purse. I do not recommend this camera for filming YouTube videos or anything like that unless you are vlogging. I don't think the quality is there like it is here because you can get this one for a lot cheaper and be able to get way better quality with it. And then you also you can change the lens, which is cool. So you can get a lot of different types of shots with this camera. All right, so now that we are all done talking about those three cameras, we're gonna get into the camera that I use to film off of and I definitely recommend for YouTubers. This is the Canon EOS 70D, you guys. There's a lot of people that will be like, oh, go get the 5D, go get the 6D, go get the 7D. No, get the Canon 70D. It's a great camera. The autofocus is amazing on it. And it has a little flip out screen as well. So if you wanna see yourself in the viewfinder to make sure you're recording, make sure you're in focus, in the frame, all that fun stuff. It's super easy and convenient. I actually do not film with that viewfinder because when I did, I did notice myself always looking over there. And what's worse is like one, I can't even see myself in the viewfinder. I've got horrible eyes. I can't see the little red button if it's recording or if I'm in focus. It did nothing for me. So I couldn't really see with it. And then number two, I kept looking over at it, trying to see myself in it. And it got really annoying for me and my viewers. And I know for me, when I watch people's videos and they're just like staring over there in the abyss, like totally staring at themselves in the viewfinder, it's annoying to watch. So my way to get rid of that little habit is I just put that thing away. So I don't even see it. All I see is just the lens and the lens itself. So that way I know I'm gonna be definitely looking into that lens. There are so many amazing things with this Canon EOS 70D, you guys. This is a very reasonable camera. You can buy the body for this camera for only $999, which is basically $1,000. You can get it at B&H Photo, Amazon, Best Buy. I will have all these cameras, everything linked down below for you guys if you wanna check them out. But yeah, I think it's an amazing camera. It's got amazing quality and the autofocus is amazing, like I was saying earlier. A lot of people are going to the 5D mark because Desi Perkins and everyone was using it, but it's actually a really bad camera to use for filming, you guys. The autofocus on it is horrendous. If you are gonna use the Canon 5D, you have to make sure someone is right behind that camera, making sure you're in focus at all times. And for a lot of YouTubers like myself, I don't have someone here working with me and filming me and being able to stand behind the camera and make sure I'm in focus. So. I'm here doing everything myself, so I have to make things as easy as possible, which is why I love the EOS 70D. And what's amazing about this camera is you have different forms of autofocus. So you can do a single focus, you can do a multi-focus if you are filming with multiple people in here that it will just fixate on to make sure everyone is in focus. And then you will also have tracking focus. The tracking one is basically wherever I move is what's gonna be in focus. So I actually do not like filming with that one because then it keeps the lens like constantly trying to focus on me or if I put a product over here, it's gonna focus over there and then it's gonna pick up something else and focus on that. And I don't wanna worry about that. So what I do is I set up single focus and it's basically just this little box that's on my monitor and it tells me wherever this box is, it's what's going to be in focus. So I always make sure that my face is in the center of that box and I know that I'm always going to be in focus. And it also makes it extremely easy for me to put a product up and then have a focus on that product and then when I take it away, it immediately focuses on me, so watch. So if I put my brush up right here, it's gonna focus up on my brush. I take it away and it's gonna focus back on me, which is amazing. 
And I always get questions about my camera because how amazing the autofocus is and how quick it is. So I definitely recommend the Canon EOS 70D, you guys. It's a great quality camera that has really long battery life and I never had a problem with it overheating or anything. I've never had any issues with this camera whatsoever. So I was actually gonna go ahead and go into lenses with this video, but I'm already looking at the recording time and it's really long already. So I think it's gonna be too long for this video. So I will make sure to do a whole video on lenses for next Tuesday for you guys. I have four lenses, so I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of them and tell you which ones I recommend for you guys and which ones I love the best out of them. So that way you can save some money because I wish I could have definitely saved some money on these lenses because I've definitely found like a holy grail lens that I absolutely love. But I will go quickly into my camera settings and my little like monitor that I have going on because I always get questions about that. So when you get your Canon EOS 70D, you're gonna get this little cord that comes with it and basically it's gonna plug into the side of your camera and then it has a USB on the other end of it that's gonna go into that USB port on your computer. So when you're on your computer, Computer, all you want to do is just load the software that comes with it for me I have a MacBook so I don't have little CD ROM side in it because they took that out so I just went to the website on Canon and download the software for free which is really easy and quick to do and then that way I can use my laptop as my monitor which makes it really easy and easy for me to see myself to make sure I'm in focus and it also has a really big red dot there so that way I can see that I'm recording and that I'm not wasting my time talking to a camera that isn't recording because that is such a pain. <laughs> so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna film with this little camera right here so that way you guys can see my setup that's right below you right now and we'll go and talk further. So I'm gonna hit the record. All right, so right here you guys can see, you can see my laptop is sitting right there. I just do a little TV tray right there and then there's a USB cord, it goes up, it plugs into the side of my camera right there, which is awesome. And then whenever my camera starts on, that little section will pop up. So basically all I do is I hit this button right here, which is already clicked because obviously I'm recording right now. It says live view shoot. So that's where I will see this little viewfinder right here of myself. So over here you have your shutter speed, you have your aperture, which is your f-stop, and then you also have your ISO. You have that right there, and then you also have all these picture styles. So you can actually choose different picture settings that's gonna make a different type of picture over here, which is awesome. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click our record, so I just hit this little button right here. And then I just have this little mouse for me as well right here, which makes it really easy for me to reach over. And then right here is my detail set. So this is where you can adjust your sharpness, your contrast, your saturation, and your color tone. So for my videos, I have my sharpness, which is basically almost to the max. It's at level five out of seven. So that way it makes my picture very sharp and very clear. And then over here, I adjust the contrast is only up to level five as well. So that way, cause the contrast can make it a little bit too fuzzy. I don't really like too much contrast to be honest. And then saturation, I have it very really high. I have it at a level six out of seven because basically what saturation is gonna do is gonna take all all those bright colors that I have behind me really pop which is awesome so I really love saturation and then over here is my color tone I leave that right in the middle here I'll show you a little difference between the saturation so if I bring saturation down you're gonna see I barely have any color there and then if I bring it up to here you're gonna see color is slowly going to be coming in so I actually like my saturation all the way right here. So you see how much brighter that is and how prettier that is. I love it. So also right here is your shutter speed. So you want to film with this on 150 or 160. If I go down to 150, I'm going to be way too light because I have all these lights in here. You're not going to see it that much, but it's going to be way too light for me. So I do 160 right now because of all the light that I have going on in my room. My f-stop right here is my aperture, which basically controls the amount of light that is going to come into the lens. So basically higher aperture means less light coming in and then a greater depth of field. So basically watch, if I change this and go up, you are going to notice that it goes darker on me. And then if I go down, you're going to notice that it's going to open the lens more and let more light in. Right there. I'm doing it at about 2.0 right now, so that way I'm not too washed out. And then right here is your ISO, which basically the higher the ISO, the less the focus. So you guys really don't want to go too high with your ISO, but what it's going to basically do is going to brighten up your picture. So look at how bright I get. Boom. 
super, super bright, but the brighter that you go, the less quality that it's going to have. So I'm actually filming the lowest that you could possibly go right now is at 100 because I have all these lights on me. So I'm already gonna be like really washed out. So I just keep it around 100. But like I was saying, it honestly depends on all the lights that I have in my room. I have two big soft boxes right here. I have another little light over there and then I have a ring light in front of me. So if I have a lot of lights coming into my room, I have to make sure I keep the ISO down. I have to make sure the aperture is around two. And then also the frames per second are either gonna be at 150 or 160. It all depends on where my lights are positioned and how much light is actually coming coming in. So I always have to adjust those settings. So that's kind of like my little thing there. I really love hooking my camera up to my laptop because honestly guys, it makes it so much easier and it makes it really easy for me to sit there and control all the controls. All right, so now let's just quickly go into a couple questions. I won't do too many so that way this video is not too long. I know it's going to be long. All right, so I got one from Jessa Beauty, which hello, I saw you over on Video Influencers. And she says, what picture is that behind me? And basically this picture picture right here is a picture that I actually got from fineartamerica.com I want to say but I've actually seen this as Z gallery so you can get this as Z gallery I think it's cheaper as Z gallery than what I paid for it which is awesome so definitely go check it out Z gallery they have it on their website and that's where I got the other picture that I have in my other background that I do sometimes that one's also from Z gallery all right so also my next question is from Katie and she says my question would be about end slates and video intros and tiles how do you create them how to animate them and if or if animating is good or how to crop it and layer icons etc Etc. All right, so I will go into all about how to make an end slate and then I will also do a video on keyframes because when you guys are seeing any animating going on, those are called keyframes, so I will do a video on that. All right, so that is all the time that I have for questions today. I really hope this video isn't too long and I'm sorry if it is. Make sure to comment down below any questions that you guys have on lenses because I'm gonna do the next one on lenses so that way I can answer your questions at the end of that video and that way it kind of gears towards that topic. So make sure to leave your questions down below and also make sure to check out my blog channel because I am vlogging regularly now. So definitely subscribe to that. And I hope that you guys found this video really helpful. I'm sorry that these are so long and so much information to you at once, which is why I'm definitely splitting these up. And then also if you guys have stayed through this long, then also comment down below a picture of the camera emoji. So that way I know that you guys stayed to the very end of this video. I would love to see that. And then everyone will be wondering why are there camera emojis everywhere? everywhere. Yeah. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful Tuesday and a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!